Every now and then, China's President Xi Jinping takes to the streets in his 18-foot limousine to project an image of China's power and influence out to the world. On a daily basis, the job of projecting China's influence is done by a well-funded Chinese government agency called the United Front Work Department. Toronto Star reporter Joanna Chu tracked the United Front as a foreign correspondent in China and in her book, China Unbound. The United Front Department, it sounds like the stuff of spy novels. It's like it tries to use uh, techniques like flattering international politicians, offering paid trips, lavish trips, uh, political donations, things like that to try to attract support for the Communist Party's goals. Chinese heritage celebrations in this country and Canada-China Friendship and Business Associations are often sponsored by China's United Front Work Department. United Front money might reach Canadian politicians through fundraising events such as this infamous 2016 private Toronto fundraising party with the Prime Minister that his office tried to keep secret. This is unusual because, you know, a target was Trudeau, the Prime Minister. But what happens in Canada, Australia, U.S., around the world, uh, where Beijing wants to have influence, is that uh, they try to really target lower-level politicians. Actually, someone told me he was running for city council in a place where cows outnumbered people, population 500, and he was offered a paid trip to China to learn about the New Silk Road project. China also pays special attention to the cultivation of what it sees as Canadian elites through a process generally referred to as elite capture. David Mulroney served as Canada's ambassador to China. Elite capture is targeting people who are um, capable of uh, shaping opinion or making decisions that are important to China. And so what they want to do is they want to get CEOs, they want to get um, former cabinet ministers, the kind of people who appear on talk shows and are quoted regularly. China cultivates its relationship with opinion leaders like former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, who has continued to lead trade missions there even after he retired from politics. Then there is the whole other category of people who work directly for Chinese interests. After 33 years in Canada's civil service, Kevin Lynch retired as clerk of the Privy Council and was immediately named a director of the Chinese government overseas oil company. When John Baird resigned as Canada's foreign minister, he quickly traveled to Hong Kong to negotiate a half-time position working for the empire of Chinese billionaire Li ka -shing. Then there is concealed influence. Well, guess what? China's going to behave like a superpower. After former federal conservative leader and Quebec Premier Jean Charest spoke out at the Empire Club in Toronto, criticizing Canada's handling of the Huawei Mengwanzhou affair. Doesn't make Canada look very good. Months later, Canadian newspapers reported that he was being paid by China's Huawei Corporation. At the time, he did not comment. David Mulroney says people risk compromising Canada, whether they realize it or not. The people think it's okay to spend time representing Canada, serving the Canadian people, defending the, the fortress, and then feel that when they retire, they can sell the plans to the fortress, or they, they can you know, sell the, the contacts they've made, the experience they've made while, while serving Canada. And China exploits that. Australia had a similar problem with Chinese influence buying, and they did something about it. After former Prime Minister Paul Keating went to work for a Chinese government bank, and numerous serving and retired politicians were revealed to be secretly accepting money from China. Uh, I'm in the wrong and I'm apologising. Today I'm introducing legislation to count... The government of Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull passed a foreign influence transparency law, which requires present and retired politicians and civil servants to reveal if they are receiving foreign payments. Attending the recent Halifax International Security Forum, Turnbull urged Canada to take similar action. You know, we're a democracy. People are free to express their views and seek to influence government, but if they're acting on behalf of foreign governments or political parties, they should um, say that they, they are. And I, I would, look, I would encourage you to consider it. I really would. In Canada, there are some rules governing the post-retirement activities of civil servants, but almost none at all for former politicians. 
The former director of the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, Richard Fadden, says Canada should follow Australia's example with a foreign influence registry. If former politician or former public service servant is working for China, fair ball, there should be a registry managed by Ottawa that says that directly, clearly and unambiguously and it should be publicly available. I think there's a lot to be said for the light of day and governmental activities. The vote will occur at 10.52. Prime Minister Trudeau gave a prestigious Senate appointment to Yun Pa Wu, who was the longtime head of the China-friendly Asia-Pacific Foundation. Senator Wu is against a foreign influence registry for Canada. It makes me nervous. I worry that if it's defined too broadly, foreign interference will capture a much wider range of uh, individuals, organizations, who have opinions or who have uh, activities that are part of the normal diversity of political opinion in this country and the uh, importance we place on freedom of speech. The Honourable Member for Stevenson, Richmond East. We're all aware Last of April, Conservative MP Kenny Chu of Richmond, B.C. introduced a private member's bill in the House of Commons proposing a foreign influence registry for Canada. It died on the order paper in the last Parliament. Hello. Mr. Chu paid a high price for that. During the last election campaign, he was bombarded on social media and on local Chinese language radio stations saying he was anti-China. That he was trying to have all Chinese in Canada specially registered with the government or even put into internment camps. Many of the attacks seem to come directly from China. He lost the riding in the last election and thinks that will encourage more election interference from China in the future. It's like tasting the first political drop of blood and they realize that they have an influence now, albeit not necessarily winning an election, but causing uh, an election loss. During the last election campaign, both the Chinese government newspapers in China and the Chinese ambassador to Canada attacked the Conservative Party because of its aggressive policies towards China. And you can see if you read carefully enough exactly what China says it's going to do in terms of foreign influence and foreign interference, in terms of its global agenda. I don't think anybody in Ottawa is thinking about those things. Meanwhile in Britain, the spy service MI5 just issued an unprecedented warning that they believed a British lawyer named Christine Lee was acting as an agent for China because she has been funneling hundreds of thousands of dollars to UK members of parliament. I call Home Secretary Pretty Pitta. The individual has links to the United Front Work Department, which is the Chinese Communist Party. Home Secretary Pretty Patel says the UK government would be introducing new legislation to counter foreign influence buying. There is no sign of equivalent action from the Government of Canada. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Ottawa.